everyone i am back and finally fully recovered from coachella and i went weekend one so by the time you're watching this i'm pretty sure coachella is over altogether. but it was our first time going to coachella first time car camping and first time being at like a massive three-day festival the concerts and festivals i usually go to are like two days max but this is like the first time we are staying over somewhere specifically for a music festival so i've definitely learned a lot and i had a really good experience overall thank goodness but today i just wanted to chat a little bit about my coachella recap everything you need to know about car camping that was not our original plan for coachella we were supposed to get an airbnb and that fell through because it was like a friend of a friend and like just a bunch of things happened and i didn't want to sell my coachella ticket because blackpink was performing so i hope you find this video helpful grab a snack because it might be a long one but like i mentioned we went weekend one it was so much fun the weather was actually not bad for Coachella at all. The hottest day was definitely Sunday and it was about 90 degrees but the other days were like mid 80s which again in the desert is very very good. I also wish I went to weekend two as well just because I wanted to see artists perform again or see different artists but the meat of this video is going to be about car camping, my experiences, tips, everything in between because I watched so many of these videos before I car camped at Coachella and they were so helpful. Like I mentioned we weren't supposed to car camp and we ended up doing so and honestly I would probably do it again just because one it is so economical and our walk from our spot at the campgrounds to the festival entrance was probably like five to seven minutes which honestly is really amazing you don't have to deal with shuttles you don't have to deal with like the main entrance and exit and honestly if you're trying to experience the most that Coachella offers car camping might be a really great option because it gives you the freedom to go back and forth to your camp Campsite. So because it was our first time, I didn't know how much car camping usually is, but we paid a total of $159. We got there Thursday morning and already started setting up. Same with a lot of people. That's another thing that they don't tell you on the website. But basically, if you really want a good spot, which I will insert the map of Coachella car camping here. I don't know if this is the same every single year, but we were at 5A, so we were psycho, worked our normal jobs Wednesday, finished packing, ran some errands after work, and basically left at 1.30, 2 a.m. on Thursday to head up to Coachella or Indio. And it would have taken us so much quicker if there hadn't been this terrible lane closure due to construction i don't know if this is a common thing we did not see that coming and it was supposed to take us about two hours two and a half hours max from like the la orange county area to get to coachella and it took us closer to four hours because of the closures we were exhausted we hadn't taken a nap or anything so my first tip would be if you plan on leaving to get there super early on thursday try to take a nap sometime before you start driving because once you hit the road like you're definitely not going to be sleeping until you get into the campgrounds set up all your stuff and then you can relax and we we're also caravanning with another group of friends so that also kind of took a little bit of extra time as well just to make sure we're all together when we exited where the coachella exit was we stopped by a gas station filled up our gas tanks, use the bathroom because trust me, you're gonna wanna use a nice real bathroom whenever you get the chance to. So we pulled over there, got gas. You also wanna make sure you have a full tank of gas, especially if you plan on you know, going in your car to cool down a little bit with the AC because it does get hot still. And also we just saw a ton of people there like meeting up with their groups. Like some people mark their cars a certain way. So when you get to the entrance of the car camping security, you can just tell them like, hey, we have X amount of cars behind us or like, oh, the cars with the balloons are with us and they'll have like a separate waiting area that you can wait for people things like that. So what we did is we just got like some painters tape and put like a hashtag on the back of our cars. Since there was only two cars, it wasn't really gonna be that hard to stick together. So after we were done at the gas station, it was probably about like 5 a.m. at that point and we started seeing the sun come up and we're like, great, we haven't slept at all, this is great. And honestly, the directions were not clear at all. All it said on the website was to follow the signs, follow the signs. So we followed the signs and eventually the signs let us down because there was like maybe two signs and after that we couldn't find out where we were. So we had to look on 
like the map that it showed and get on like a particular street also if you are lost just look on google maps and see where it's significantly red because that's probably where you need to be because the line once we got there was so freaking long i'm talking blocks and blocks of cars waiting to go into the car camping area it says on the website that it usually doesn't open until 6 a.m or something or like 9 a.m it it, just, it tells you like the certain time but it never opens at that time it opens way earlier so we were checking twitter and like reddit and stuff and some people were saying that this year they let they started letting people in around 4 a.m so trust me when you think that you're early you're not like there's still a lot of cars there who are even earlier than you because they want to get a good spot it wasn't until i went through the car camping security and everything to realize how massive it was it was just a big chunk of land and if you get there way later you're in like the back back lot and that's when it gets exhausting to walk to the festival entrance so if you can if your group can leave early get a good spot, muscle through the night, and then you'll be able to just chill Thursday morning, like all day Thursday, and then recuperate and be prepared for the festival Friday through Sunday. Honestly, the car camping line took us about two hours to get through. Um, there are gonna be people who try to cut you off, try to cut the line, you gotta be a little aggressive. It honestly sucks because for us, the signs were like non-existent. So it's basically like two lanes, her direction of the road so one of the lanes would be where the car camping line was and then there would be like a passing lane but people would try to go there and cut people off and then on the reverse side of things you can't really do a u-turn like if you're coming the opposite direction and you realize like oh crap i need to get in this line over here it's just a mess and the workers are also exhausted or they don't know what's going on either so you're kind of just out there to fend for yourself but the good news is that we were able to secure a really good spot on the campgrounds and there's also preferred car camping if you know that you want to be close to the entrance that is a little bit more it's not that much more honestly but yeah it's either you do the preferred parking where they section off like a good amount of space and you'll still be guaranteed a spot close to the entrance or you just get there really early to do so so once you go through the car camping security you are following the line and there are people telling you where to park so if you do have a big group or just more than one car I would say the most ideal way to have your cars parked is back to back so then um, you have like this whole middle section together there are bigger groups who like stagger themselves in a certain way where they get like this whole like section together and it's really nice because you can set up like your tables a certain way, your coolers, your tents, things like that. So we just got like these canopy dividers that kind of gave us a little bit of privacy from the group in front of us if that makes sense so that's another thing we learned when we got there they're not always going to give you like that back-to-back -back spot where one car can park here and the other one park like backs in but just something to consider and ask if you want your spot set up a certain way once you park you have a pretty decent amount of space i took my dad's van and our friends rented their suv as well just to fit everything inside so we had coolers we had canopies um, our tents obviously we definitely wanted to sleep well and we already had air mattresses so we brought air mattresses our friends slept in sleeping bags which I personally wouldn't recommend but honestly you're so exhausted at the end of each day that you probably will knock out wherever I really loved having my air mattress I brought my pillow with me my sheets my blanket we actually have our own camping box that had a majority of these items already but if you want to cook they totally allow you to obviously bring your alcohol bring your drinks we brought like power raids liquid ivs you gotta really stay hydrated they are strict about glass so make sure you're not bringing in like glass bottles and things like that because we did see a lot of people have to throw it out but for us we mainly just had like canned alcohol like seltzers beers things like that one thing we learned real quick is that when you get your canopy up you definitely want to secure it with metal stakes do not get the plastic ones because we had plastic ones from our original camping gear since we never really had to like fully stake down our tent like it was never windy enough to do so where we camped but in the desert you'd most definitely want to have metal stakes because we were so lucky and on thursday had a sandstorm and a wind storm dust storm 
all the storms it was incredibly windy and it progressively got worse throughout the day so when we first started setting up around i want to say like eight nine ish it was chill it was just like a little breeze it felt good by the time noon hit things were like flying everywhere we saw someone's canopy fully flip over on someone else's car don't be those people put, get metal stakes um, it got so bad that there were workers like driving around on golf carts telling us to take off the tops of our canopies because it was just getting so bad that like things were getting ripped off of the ground. So metal stakes, make sure you have those. I believe they usually are included with most canopies, but some of them don't come with it. So just FYI. Now for the food situation. So a lot of people bring stuff that they can cook or something that's easy to heat up on the stove. Like we ended up making sandwiches, like we went and got bread and stuff. But if you end up forgetting things like I did, I literally forgot all my makeup at home. So there's actually shuttles to the supermarkets every single day. On Thursday, they are running a lot longer because it's day zero technically so we hopped on a shuttle it took us to a local supermarket we were able to get ice there more snacks anything you really need you can just get it at the grocery store i went to a walgreens because it was like across the street from the supermarket and grabbed some makeup uh I still can't believe i forgot it but also pro tip do not pack the night before coachella please pack like the week the beginning of the week before coachella and then you won't be like me and forget a lot of essential stuff but it all worked out thank goodness the shuttles were really helpful because once you park your car in car camping you cannot leave until sunday night or technically monday morning so you could totally do that with food they also have a lot of food vendors there as well they did open later though on thursday from what i remember so if you get there really early and you're hungry you're gonna want to have a snack or something to eat you're gonna be exhausted it's gonna start getting hot and if you're drinking don't drink on an empty stomach because some people just end up partying way too hard day zero and they don't pace themselves and then they end up being very miserable for the entire festival because they're just trying to play like catch up but when you're at the festival like that's a lot as well like physically mentally everything on the other festival days like everything opens like you can get breakfast there's lunch dinner like things are open till like 2 a.m so if you're worried about food i wouldn't really be i think the main thing is having snacks and things to like kind of just like munch on throughout the day you know but yeah the tent next to us brought like k barbecue ribeyes like they were prepared to have a meal also if you are going to be cooking just know that there is very limited running water and a majority of it is going to be at the showers and i did not see a single person bringing like a pot or anything to wash at the showers the only other area where they have like running water is the water refill station for like drinking water and stuff so you're gonna have to be a little flexible we brought some clean sponges and some dish soap and we would just like rinse down our pots we didn't really have a lot honestly and we would just use water to like rinse it off and it is really gross because there is no running water to wash your hands at the campgrounds it's just hand sanitizer which i felt really disgusted by we found some really awesome like camping gear so the first thing is getting a two room pop-up shower tent so on the inside it's two rooms right we kind of put it in between our cars because it fit that way and one room was like the shower essentially and then the other room it was like a zip divider but the other room was essentially our bathroom it had a portable toilet in it and let me just tell you the portable toilet was hands down the best investment we could have made for car camping because i was not about to use the restroom at 2 a.m in the dark in the campgrounds when you know that those porta potties get so nasty at night and they only clean it in the morning so can you imagine just use your imagination so we had our own portable toilet our group was the only one that used the toilet we had clorox wipes in there like we had poopery like come on the whole thing and it was about a hundred 150 dollars on amazon i will link it down below because honestly 
life-changing and it's a lot easier to clean and maintain than you would think so there is a tank for clean water and then there's like a gray tank at the very bottom they're like attached like this and the gray tank captures you know all the fluids and all those things that you do in the bathroom and there's also a manual like flushing mechanism so you're able to flush like you know everything that you need to so we have like this little pod that we also purchased which i'll also link down below that you can just dissolve literally everything it breaks down poop it breaks down toilet paper and at the end of it you just we just dumped it into the porta potty because that's essentially what the porta potty is and we had no issues with like smells or anything it actually smelled very very fresh and clean but honestly if you have someone that's like willing to just take a visit to the porta potty it's like dump it out it's good since we're on the topic of bathrooms let's talk about the showers shall we because that was one of my biggest fears and one of my biggest worries and i didn't see too many people talking in depth about the showers so i will talk about it because i did brave the portable showers at one point because i just needed to wash my hair it was just so gross so we did have the shower portion of the tent as i mentioned and we also got this really cool electric shower head obviously this is like going above and beyond what car camping could be but we really want to make it as comfortable as possible so we had our solar shower as well right so we would go fill it up at the water filling stations they are really open about that it's not just for drinking water but you just don't want to be doing like dishes and stuff in that area because that's gross but there was a ton of people filling up their solar showers it gets hot enough where your water gets like hot hot especially if you wake up relatively early and you want to take like a day shower that's probably the best time to do it showering like around 10 a.m is probably like the sweet spot unless you want to go to the portable showers where they do have hot water by the time you get back every single night you are exhausted so if you don't want to have like a solar shower or do the solar shower or you just feel really nasty from like the dust and all the grime i actually got these really awesome heavy duty shower wipes and they make you feel really clean it gets you through the night if you just want to freshen up and I will also link them down below because I ordered quite a few options, but I ended up keeping that one out of everything. So it really came in clutch. It was really handy. I felt really clean or as clean as I could with like wipes. So yeah, this is for all the clean bougie girlies because I can only get down and dirty to a certain extent. Like I do have a limit and I do need to feel clean every day. So... This is what I did to help myself feel a lot more comfortable and plus you're in the desert, it's hot, you're sweating all day. But a little bit about the portable showers. So lines do get really long. We've seen the line go past our campgrounds like just all the way down. But if you go early enough, I would say the sweet spot is like between 7 and 10 a.m. That's like the sweet spot. Anytime after that, you're in a long line just waiting and waiting so i did actually use the portable showers twice and they do have super duper showers which are somewhere in a different lot it was definitely going to be a little bit more of a trek for us and they're usually about ten dollars just so you know they don't put the price on there but from what i've heard it was like 10 bucks for the super duper showers and all that really means is that you get like an extra little changing room area so you can put your stuff in versus like the normal portable showers just one stall you're in it and you hang your stuff like right outside of it so i don't know if this is a thing every year i don't know but for us one of the portable showers in the free shower section was actually a super duper shower and a lot of girlies were learning about this really quickly so by the end of the weekend it was getting longer for those particular showers i would say there were about like four to five shower trailers and each one had about eight to nine shower slots and they were divided by gender as well so guys shower in their own trailer section and then we're like on a different side and the main way that we determined which trailer had the super showers was if they had sinks on the outside because the normal showers will just have sinks on the inside of the trailer so if you see like this little section of sinks on the outside right next to the trailer that trailer is most likely a super duper shower and the first time i used it i didn't have to wait for a spot but the second time i went i did have to wait about like an extra 10 minutes on top of the general line that they have but honestly so worth it i would say the portable showers are like 
prison showers in a sense like they very they were definitely like small um they were stainless steel the water pressure wasn't always that great but it did have hot water which i think was really good they don't rush you on how long you can shower for they don't time you obviously be considerate of others um, because there will likely be people waiting and with the way that the showers are like i said there's like one little area that you're in actually physically showering there's a curtain divider and then there's like a changing room spot that's just like another little small section and then another shower curtain to leave the facility but if you're gonna shower be mindful of others a lot of the girls that i saw at the showers were really considerate you know like they took their time they felt clean but they weren't in there for like an hour you know what i mean so it definitely could have been a lot worse i didn't try the normal showers where it's just one stall and you hang your stuff outside but I did like the super duper showers. Like at that point in the festival, you're just like, whatever, just give me a clean feeling shower. You know what I mean? And also if you want to brush your teeth in that area, that's a good spot too. But honestly, we would just like fill up cups with water and like brush our teeth at the end of each night and just like spit out the toothpaste in front of our cars. A lot of people do that. It's actually very normal. But yeah, like I said, I had to be clean. I needed my skincare routine every night. I packed some micellar water to get that makeup off. I needed to feel clean. You know, all the gunk, all the dust. We don't want that. That's basically how I stay clean at Coachella. But I think that's it for car camping. A couple of tips I would give is obviously befriend your neighbors when you get there. You don't want to have any hostility with the people who are literally going to be beside you. Another tip is, yeah, there's going to be people partying till like 2 to 4 a.m. Fortunately for us, like our groups next to us were pretty considerate and they usually like stopped partying around like 2 or 3 in the morning. But we were so tired every night and I also bought these foam um, earplugs which were a lifesaver so i was already exhausted by the end of the day but having the earplugs really just helped me like be in a more calm and quiet quieter situation and i would just knock out i know that we were very fortunate with our car camping experience and typically people who car camp are consider it overall i know there are some bad apples out there but if you come prepared with an open mind you can have a lot of fun when you car camp and honestly you'd be surprised how many people are up so damn early every morning like i felt like i was waking up early by like 8 30 9 o'clock but there's already people walking and like some people are working out at the campgrounds like just running laps casually you know um, doing getting their workout in at like 6 30 a.m. and there's also a lot of activities that they have um, for the campgrounds specifically which is really cool we ended up not doing any of them but we thought about it we saw it it looks really fun if you can get up that early to do it but we were just dead every single day there's stuff from like early morning all the way to like at night at the dome where they have like DJs silent discos just like little fun things that you could do on the campgrounds. There's also the general store, which is actually pretty big. It carries almost everything that you could possibly need. Um, but if you don't find anything there, just take a shuttle to the supermarket and you're golden. One tip we learned about ice is that if you're buying it from the cart people that are like driving around, it's about $15 a bag, where if you have someone in your group who can carry bags of ice, just go take a shuttle to the supermarket really doesn't take that long you can probably get like the same bag of ice for like three four dollars so get a couple of those bring it back boom just save yourself some money but for us we probably bought ice like every other day so it lasted us quite a while um granted it wasn't as hot as it could be in coachella so if you're dealing with hotter weather your ice will probably melt faster but if you're trying to save money and you have a big group who needs a lot of ice Taking a trip to the grocery store might not be the worst idea. Also, it does get really dark at night. There's not a lot of like street lights. Um, so if you're looking for your car, we actually bought a lot of these like solar panel lights that just like go into the ground. Just kind of place them like in front of our cars. So when we're walking back, we can easily see like where our spot is. Bring lamps as well. That will be really helpful. Another perk about car camping is the festival opens at 12. You can technically get in right on the dot or like start lining up to go inside the festival because there was a line um whether that was people going in for merch because the merch lines are so deceiving we got in at like 12 10 and 
we on one day we ended up waiting two hours in a merch line and that was already like us being in the halfway point of the merch line and then the other time we waited about like 35 minutes because it was moving a lot faster and we tried like a different line but i did love having the option of going in early right when the festival opened get all my merch bring it back to the campgrounds put it in our car and then go back into the festival explore get food before it gets really packed listen to some good music because it does get packed starting around 4 p.m when the sun goes down so that's just something to note wear comfortable shoes because your feet will hurt bring a lot of band-aids um, i would pre-wrap my feet every day before i wore like my sneakers or whatever because i knew they were gonna get blistery but yeah it was really fun i would probably do it again because i literally have everything i need now for car camping but we love seeing blackpink rosalia bad bunny metro boomin like DPR Ian and DPR Live, Chris Lake and Fisher, so much good music. And the very last thing I want to quickly touch on was leaving the festival. So technically when you are car camping, you are able to leave to go home at 2 a.m. on Monday technically. So Coachella tries to have Sunday be like the shorter night so the headliners will go on earlier and you could technically leave the car camping site at 2 a.m which is what we did so we got back packed up our stuff and again we should have napped because we did a full day of coachella that day but we did not nap and we drove home at 2 a.m and like i mentioned we are not that far from la so it took us about two and a half hours to get back home which i think was a sweet spot i have heard that it could take anywhere between four to seven hours to get back to where you need to be and i did take monday off work so we literally got home like right at 5 a.m took a quick rinse off and just knocked out for a few hours and then carried on with our day and i think that was the best way to do it even though we were so exhausted like me and jeff were staying awake and fighting for our lives which is a little bit dangerous at the same time like if you cannot absolutely handle driving home coherently don't do it because it is dangerous we had fog to deal with there was still like quite a bit of cars like it was a lot it was still a lot but i'm really happy we got home early so we had the full day ahead of us so yeah coachella traffic not fun it takes forever just to get to the freeway from the coachella campsite area festival grounds so just keep that in mind but if you absolutely do not want to wait in traffic leave right when you can <laughs> all right that is all i have for today's video thank you so much for watching if you are going to coachella next year or whenever you're watching this i hope you have a ton of fun if you have any questions about car camping my dms are open on instagram but that's all i have for today's video i will see you in the next one bye